The goal of this lecture is to help you understand some of the ways that microbes can affect energy resources in geological environments. And we're specifically focused on fuel hydrocarbons. We're going to look at some of the impacts that microbes can have on petroleum resources, three examples of that. And then also how microbes can uh, play a role in generating natural gas. I've divided up this lecture into five different videos, each corresponding to one of the bullets listed here. Uh, and we're going to start out by talking about souring in petroleum reservoirs. <clears throat> We've known about the association of microbes and oil for quite a long time. In fact, it's uh, in oil reservoirs uh, that we first realized that life extends deep into the subsurface. The text that I've shown that I've provided here uh, is from a paper that was published in 1926 in the journal Science. Uh, the, the authors of that work in their paper describe how uh, sulfide is something that is commonly observed in oil and oil fields and uh, that the prevailing notion at the time was that that sulfide was produced abiologically because life did not exist deep in the subsurface. In other words, it was just too harsh conditions for microbes to be able to be uh, down there producing that sulfide. Well, they put this to the test. Uh, they went out and collected some water samples from some oil fields in southeastern Illinois uh, and then tested them for the presence of sulfate-reducing bacteria using some culturing techniques. And what they found is that almost every sample they collected contained sulfate-reducing bacteria. So this provided some strong evidence that the sulfide that was produced in these oil, oil fields was actually produced biologically and that life uh, existed deep in the subsurface, that microbial uh, life was present down there. Okay, so this is pretty um, significant finding. Well, one of the reasons why they were interested in this is because uh, sulfide and sulfur causes souring of oil and gas. Uh, souring has nothing to do with citrus. Uh, in the oil and gas industry, Crude oil that contains a relatively high amount of sulfur is referred to as sour crude. And crude oil that contains little sulfur is referred to as sweet crude. Apparently the cutoff is at about 0.5% sulfur. Well, nowadays we know that uh, souring in oil fields can occur abiologically, but most commonly it's the result of sulfate reduction, microbial sulfate reduction. Uh, sulfate reducers, of course, reduce the sulfur and sulfate and produce sulfide, which is the key uh, souring agent. The electron donors that, are, uh, that drive this reaction forward uh, are derived from the petroleum itself. They're using oil organics. Degradation of that complex organic matter in petroleum can produce some of the simple organic compounds that sulfate reducers can use, uh, as well as hydrogen. Uh, this can occur in the reservoir, but also in the infrastructure used to extract oil and gas. In either case, it's problematic because it can cause corrosion of any metal that that sulfur encounters uh, in the infrastructure. It increases the refining cost because that sulfur has to be removed from the product. And if it leads to precipitation of metal sulfide minerals, it can decrease the permeability of the formation making it more difficult to exchange fluids with a, a, a subsurface reservoir. It seems that our actions actually contribute to this in, in many cases. We enhance this process. And <clears throat> one of the ways that that can be done is uh, by adding phosphate. Phosphate is, of course, uh, a major nutrient for all living organisms and happens to be generally of low abundance in subsurface environments. And so if you were to add sulfate, I'm sorry, phosphate to many of these subsurface environments, you potentially could stimulate microbial activity, including the activity of sulfate reducers. And in fact, uh, one of the things that's done to help protect infrastructure against corrosion is by adding uh, anti-corrosion agents, which in some cases contain phosphate. Okay, so that phosphate can stimulate this process um, because it's an important nutrient that is often limiting. Another thing that can uh, lead to souring, another action of ours, uh, is adding sulfate into these reservoirs. 
Um, one of the things that's done to help squeeze more oil out of uh, depleted oil and gas reservoirs is injecting water. And that's what's depicted over here in this image on the right. And basically, there's an injection well. Water is injected down into there, and it helps push oil into a production well so that more of that oil can be recovered. Well, if the water that is injected to help recover more oil, if that water contains sulfate, you're basically adding sulfate to an environment that is rich in electron donors and creating a situation that could be very favorable for growth of sulfate reducers. These environments don't tend to have a lot of sulfate under natural conditions. Uh, and so you're basically uh, supplying something that would be necessary and, and needed to help drive this reaction forward. <clears throat> In addition to that, if these reservoirs have high temperature, the fact that you're pumping water that's relatively cool down into that reservoir could lower the reservoir temperature and also um, uh, benefit microbial growth. Okay, so if, if this reservoir has a temperature, let's say, greater than 100 degrees C, that could be one of the things that's limiting the activity of microorganisms, the rate at which they can be active. Okay, and that, that cooler water would help uh, alleviate that, that uh, stress and help them uh, become more active, potentially including sulfate reducers. <clears throat> Some of the ways that we deal with this include cleaning the infrastructure, cleaning the pipes basically. Um, microbes prefer or tend to uh, occur most commonly attached to surfaces. Okay, so the sulfate reducers that are doing this in many, in many cases would be found in biofilms within those pipes. If you scrape out those cells, you would lower the number of cells that are present and able to catalyze the reaction and therefore lower the rate of the reaction. <clears throat> you could inject biocides. Again, this would lower the number of, of living cells able to catalyze the reaction and therefore slow it down. And then also injection of nitrate could also um, help uh, mitigate souring because nitrate is a more energetically favorable electron acceptor. Um, microbes that use that would be able to potentially help compete sulfate reducers for electron donors, therefore limiting the extent of sulfate reduction that could occur. Okay, now the next example I want to talk about is heavy oil. So you need to um, advance to the next video to uh, listen to that discussion.